Hey YouTube, it's Robert back with my first video of the year and wouldn't you know it, but my year started off with a leaking toilet. So uh, I know my channel is focused on remodeling, but really I like to share anything uh, that I can with you guys in terms of uh, taking care of your home. Uh, so whether that be making uh, changes that you elected to make on your own or maybe it's dealing with unforeseen things like this. Uh, but first noticed uh, the toilet was wobbling a little bit and then as I flushed it I did see that at the bottom of the toilet the caulking was actually seeping water through so I'll show you guys in the video what that was looking like. I was hoping that it was just something simple like the bolts being loose uh, but as uh, you'll see later on uh, when I removed this we did have damage to the flange so had to make some additional repairs that I was hoping not to uh, but that's the way it goes right uh, if you are removing and resetting a toilet just for the purpose of maybe you changed out your floor and uh, all you have to do is a simple remove it and then put it back and put your new wax ring down then this is relatively easy uh, if we have anything that's going past the angle stop and the valve where we got to get into the wall, uh, then you may need to get a licensed plumber if it's not something that you're super familiar with. Same thing with a damaged flange. Depending on how significant that damage is, that might be another situation where you're better off to have a plumber come out. But I myself am no licensed plumber and uh, as you'll see in here with a, a couple of common uh, pieces of hardware that we can pick up at a Home Depot or Lowe's, I was able to get this thing leak free without needing to have a plumber come out. Now I know that I mentioned we're going to use a wax ring, but we're actually going to be using this uh, wax ring alternative here by Fluid Master. Uh, I like to use this over the wax rings just from a cleanliness standpoint, ease, and uh, it's a really secure um, alternative to our traditional wax rings. So I highly recommend uh, taking a look into a product like this Fluid Master, which you can pick up at Lowe's or Home Depot. It comes with the bolts inside of it. So other than uh, a couple of our installation tools like a wrench, uh, we really don't need a lot uh, outside of this and our caulking when we're all done to do a quick remove and reset of a toilet. So this is going to be a little bit of a long video, but before we jump into it, I would love it if you guys would hit that like button for me. It's a real easy thing to do, and it might get this video to at least one person out there that could benefit from the information I'm going to share. Now let's get to it. Down here at the bottom is where we are uh, noticing the problem, and I'm going to go ahead and flush this toilet for you guys so you can see how the water starts to slowly seep out. And there's a good angle for us to see it starting to just work its way out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it another flush just so we can see it move out a little bit more. And there we go. Again, with each flush, it's pushing that water out. All right, and so the first thing we're gonna do is go over here to our water supply line. We're gonna turn this off, cut off the flow of water up into our top tank. Once I have cut the water line off, then I'm going to flush the toilet again so that we can empty the tank. Once we have it pretty well drained out, uh, we're gonna go down and disconnect the bottom portion of our water supply line, and then we will uh, move on to the next step. So here we can now Go ahead and disconnect this. Be prepared, we may get a little bit of water falling out of here. Not too fret. And now we have disconnected our water line from our toilet. Now it's gonna be time for us to remove our toilet uh, from the ground, which is going to be held in place with our uh, bolts that are under these caps. So I need to get these caps off first and Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut around the caulking just to uh, give myself a little bit less resistance when we go to pull the toilet off And we should be able to just reach in and pull our cap off to uh, expose our existing bolts And when we come over to this other side this side's a little tricky here, so I'm going to take my little knife that I'll use to uh, cut the caulking in a minute and I'm just going to pry that underneath and uh, pop it off that way. 
So you do that with a little flathead screwdriver or something, but this works because it's just like paper thin and I'm just gonna barely pop that off. Once I've uh, removed those, I have my little bolts here and I'm just gonna take off my nut and washers. Now we've got the nuts off the bolts on both the left and right side and we are ready to lift the toilet off as soon as we cut through the caulking. I'm gonna go ahead and use my handy little painter's tool here to uh, cut through the caulking around the toilet. I also had that little X-Acto knife but uh, I actually like using this for the uh, caulking here. This little edge uh, on that side is gonna be perfect and we're just gonna go ahead and score all the way around the toilet to get through that caulking so that it makes it a little easier for us to lift the toilet up. And so we run this through here, cutting through that caulking. We want to be aggressive enough to get through it, but it doesn't need to be all removed. Uh, we just want to make sure that it's not fighting us when we take the toilet up. Now we should be able to lift our toilet up and over these bolts. So here you can see we've got the toilet removed and all this gunky stuff. Uh, we've got our wax ring there in the center and the two bolts still in the flange. So we, uh, we're going to need to get all that removed and uh, get the bolts out from the flange. Then we will get this all cleaned up. Hopefully we don't have any damage to the flange itself here, um, but there's still quite a bit of water that we need to get cleaned up so we can uh, see exactly what we're dealing with and then we'll get ready to set the new one on. So removing the bolt, I'm gonna be kind of wedging them down here. Uh, and in this particular flange, I've got just enough room to pop these bolts out. And uh, I could set those aside. Now this, existing wax ring here I need to get cleaned up so that we can set the new ring in its place. I do still have a lot of water around here so like I said I'm going to take my painter's tool scrape all of this away and then we can kind of see what exactly we're dealing with underneath. And just getting our wax peeled off this down, set this aside. No, this job is not for anybody that's mildly grossed out by this wax and the uh, there we've got the bottom portion here so you can see our true picture underneath I've got all the, the wax pretty well cleaned up off of our flange here what we would hope to find is a flange that is uh, not damaged at all but we did not find that in this case. Uh, you can see on the left side, which is the side that was wobbling, there's actually a crack along this uh, side here. So when the bolt um, was in, it's able to get pushed over a little bit. Now on the other side, we actually um, had a little bit more of a tough time even getting the bolt out because it was secured and this is a, uh, this particular flange doesn't have a notched out area for us to slide it in to the tightened side. It's just this, this small little pocket here. These flanges should have a opening that's larger for the uh, bolt head to fit into and then you slide it over into the tighter parts to keep it secured. This did not have that. It was just the bolt uh, kind of uh, angled and then caught underneath. So you take it, you know, like like this and it had to get kind of wedged and then caught under 
So we've got this metal replacement ring that we're going to install uh, over our existing flange here. And this is specifically designed uh, for this purpose. Nice thing too, uh, my flange actually sits below the tile line. So this replacement ring is gonna bring that up flush with the tile uh, or much, much closer to flush. Um, and that's gonna help us as well. Uh, so we want the slots to be lined up uh, at the same spot that the flange was because our bolts need to still be in the same location for when we put the toilet on. Uh, but we're not as concerned with uh, this spot there where it's cracked because now our bolt is going to secure into this replacement ring and then we're going to secure this replacement ring down to our flange here with some screws. Another little problem that we have here is that uh, if we go through the holes that the flange has, there is nothing to grab onto. These are just uh, just dirt underneath. So I can't secure my repair ring to my existing flange. What I'm gonna do is drill some pilot holes and I'm just going to create new holes so that my repair ring can actually bite into the plastic. Do instead is I am going to find where the holes line up when I put it on, uh, and then I'm going to drill myself new holes. You can see I already tested one here by drilling a pilot hole into my flange, and I'm gonna do that in as many of these spots as we can, distribute the stress on this evenly. I'm using a very small and narrow screw so that I uh, don't impact the integrity of this flange any more than I need and by dispersing it in uh, as many of those holes as we can uh, I think it'll help to relieve that stress when we put the uh, bolts back through and then we start to tighten those because that's going to want to pull them up so we're going to make sure it's as secured all the way around as possible um, this is also a better angle of where that uh, crack is and as you could see that bolt was wobbly because there's just nothing for it to bite onto there um, so, at least we identified the problem. All right, so we are gonna secure the new ring to the old flange. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take my pilot hole. Um, like any pilot hole, I roughly want it to be about the same size as the screw or slightly smaller. We don't want it to be bigger or the screw won't have anything to thread onto. So I'm just gonna drive this straight down and all of these holes here and then we'll run our screws in and we should have a pretty secure new flange ring. I'm gonna go ahead and finish drilling uh, my screws into these additional holes and then we should be ready to install our bolts onto our new flange ring. We just want to go nice and slow, uh, less risk of drilling through and cracking our uh, flange. And we don't want to over uh, screw this in either. We're all screwed in here, and now we are ready to go ahead and slide our bolts into our new ring. Uh, we are now securing to the metal, so we no longer need to worry about the fact that we've got this crack here. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this bolt in, slide it around, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. And we'll use our uh, plastic washer that's gonna grab onto the bolt to secure those so that they stick in there. I know this one's still falling because there's a hole underneath it, but when we use the plastic uh, to grab that, it's gonna bring it up tight against the bottom of our new ring. And this is that little piece that I'm talking about here. So it's just a little washer. And you slide down on the bolt so that we get it nice and tight there. 
Now when we have that on this side, you see how my, my bolt's no longer falling down. It's, uh, it's tightened up against here. And we don't need it to be like completely tight where it's not moving. Um, we just wanna make sure that it is gonna pull as we start to tighten it after putting our uh, toilet down. All right, so we've got our bolts in place. We'll go ahead and drop our ring into our bolts. And we've got these all set here. Uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and get ready to try and uh, throw our toilet back over the top of this. See how we can get these things tightened and uh, then we'll be ready to test her all out. Now, got our toilet on, bolts are through. I'm gonna throw our plastic uh, ring on here first. We want this uh, with the concave side up because then our uh, metal washer is going to fall into that piece. And then we'll finish up with our nut here. Just uh, hand tighten this as much as we can. So we got this pretty tight already. Finish it up with the wrench here. Same thing on the right side. Just getting it tightened up. There is no more wobbling toilet. Uh, it is now very secure, uh, so it is not shaking back and forth. This side was the side that was loose before, and now we uh, have a very tight fit on both sides. So we are ready to go ahead and reconnect our water supply line here. And uh, then we're gonna turn the valve back on, get this thing filled, and hopefully we will have a non-leaking toilet again down to our angle stop and we're filling up again i'm not going to fill it too much uh, i just want to fill it enough that i can get a flush so that we can uh, determine if in fact we're getting any leak or not so i stop it now now we got the moment of truth here. We're gonna give it a flush and make sure that we're not seeing any seeping out from underneath here like we were before. <laughs> Looking down here below, no signs of, uh, of any kind of water coming through. So we're, uh, we're passing the test so far. I'm gonna go ahead and re uh, turn it on again, let the tank fill completely and give it another go. All right, so our tank's all filled up again. We're gonna go ahead and flush her one more time. And if you remember, we were seeing all that water seeping out before. We are no longer seeing any water seeping out. We now have a toilet that is super tight. Uh, and so we're not getting the wobbling anymore. Uh, we can go ahead and caulk the bottom of this and uh, put those little caps back on uh, and then we are done. And I know this video is getting long, but just for completionist's sake, we are going to cut through our bolt with our little saw here. Um, you know, hacksaw is all, all that we need for this uh, and uh, is again readily available. Then we'll go ahead and caulk it. Once we cut through it, our cap will fit right back on. Now hiding our bolt and giving us more of a completed look. All right, and the very last thing we've got to do here is we're gonna take this DAP quick seal. It's a kitchen and bath adhesive caulk, waterproof seal. We're gonna run that around the entire perimeter of the toilet to seal that little bit of a gap we have uh, between the base and the tile. All right, and there you see we've got the toilet caulked all around the bottom now. Uh, this is what it should look like after it's done. Uh, we've got our caps back on and the job is officially finished. So if you guys found this video helpful, please hit the like button for me and feel free to share this with anyone you know that might need this info. Uh, comment down below with any of your thoughts or questions and be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me in the future.
Again, my name is Robert and I'm here to help with all your home and remodeling needs. Until next time, happy remodeling and have a great day.